historic day. It is a memorable day. It is a legacy day. A project that's 60 years in the making is now coming true. There were more stops and starts and stops and starts and stops and starts. This project went into hibernation at one point, which normally isn't a good thing. But it was through the work and effort of so many. I'll mention Joe McGranahan as a determined individual. I'll mention the Route 15 Coalition that saw a big, grander scheme of not only the northern area heading up to New York, but this area as well. And then just a bunch of us that met once a year, twice a year, three times a year, that um, tried to figure out which in any way we could possibly do to get it done. So I just want to say it has been a, um, a pleasure to work with the legislative team. It's been a pleasure to work with PennDOT um, to make this dream and if you would have asked 99.9% .9 of the folks in this area, would this ever happen? In their honesty, they would say no. There's a bridge to nowhere coming up this way. Not a bridge to nowhere, a road to nowhere. Uh, that when they finally opened up that pathway, um, it did in fact go to nowhere. But as a result of the commitment, as a result of bipartisanship, um, I remember the rally in the Capitol with Governor Rendell and Governor Corbett both there to support the effort. This dream has become a reality. Now we're not done yet. We're not done yet, Joe. We still have a southern section. But John Gordon went on transportation. Gene Yaw went on transportation. Linda Culver went on transportation to make sure that the eyes continue to be set on the goal. And this will absolutely get done. I'm especially grateful that we're joined today by so many distinguished elected officials, uh, individuals here at the local level who are working on this at least as long as I have, and I'm into my, I guess, second decade of working on this. But so many who've worked in this community over more than just years, and in many cases there are people here who have worked on this for multiple decades, almost as long as I have lived, and that's saying something about uh, um, the, the investment that people have made. We're, we're especially grateful that we had as well, at the federal level, after years and even decades of talking about it, an infrastructure bill passed in 2021 that makes it possible to make an investment of uh, several million dollars into the, the southern uh, section, even as we're looking forward to the prospect of having the, the northern section move forward. But we're grateful that that bill passed and grateful that the people of this region uh, who frankly deserve this investment have waited a long time for this investment. An investment in their future, an investment in the, their, their children and their grandchildren's future and well beyond even their grandchildren. So this is a day to celebrate not just today, but this is a tomorrow event. This is a day to celebrate that future, the future of the Susquehanna Valley and all that went into it. Uh, my father was a, uh, a maintenance uh, superintendent for District 3-0 uh, back in the 60s. And in my office in Williamsport, I have a, it's like a shadow box that uh, my mother made from when my dad participated in one of the openings of Interstate 80. So this is really, uh, it's really an honor for me personally to say, you know, my dad was involved in, I think th according to the, some of the numbers on some of the, the uh, uh, material that was handed out was in 19, September of 1964. So, to be involved in a project like this when he was involved in a project just a few miles up the road is indeed, it's a real honor for me. And uh, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank uh, PennDOT for the, the invitation uh, to attend. And once again, all of you are to be congratulated for this project. Um, as a small child, I remember coming up from Harrisburg and 
questioning my parents, well, where does that road go? Why aren't we taking that? Well, it doesn't go anywhere. Well, why would they build a road that doesn't go anywhere? And they said, well, this is part of it, but then the road stopped. Well, who would stop a road? Um, I think that began my career in public service. I just didn't know it at that point. Um, so, you know, the, the at the time, uh, I think it was Ice Tea Monies had run out. Uh, we were in Central Pennsylvania. Uh, we were the are the last piece of the 11 and 15 quarter, I believe, to be finished. Um, so shortly after I graduated from high school, or right before, I got the opportunity to intern for Representative Merle Phillips. And if you're wondering why I have this book today, one is because it was Merle Phillips' book, and he told me, always take this with you outside so your papers aren't blowing all over the place. And two, I thought it was just a little bit of credit to him um, for all he did for this area and how he mentored me. Um, but I got to work for him from the time I was 17 years of age, and I also got to meet Representative Russ Fairchild, who I believe is here somewhere. Russ, can you raise your hand if you're still here? There he is. Um, I can remember Merle and Russ talking about this project, and I thought, I, I don't even know what a bypass is. Uh, and finally, Merle said to me, you know that road that just stops, and then it all came back to me? Yeah, that's what we're trying to finish. Um, and I also remember them talking about a gentleman by the name of Joe McGranahan, um, and how if they didn't get this road finished, Joe was never going to stop talking about it. So they decided we needed to do something for this. And I know that Merle and Russ believed someday this was going to happen. They just couldn't predict when. Uh, and we always say projects like this are a, a long marathon. Uh, it's not a sprint, it's a long marathon. So the project um, starts to get revived, and uh, I had the honor to get on the uh, Citizens Advisory Group um, on behalf of uh, Merle Phillips. And I think the wonderful thing about that is I have gotten to watch this project unfold for about 33 years. Uh, and little did I know when I was on that citizen advisory group and you guys were exhausting us with, if you drove this way, would you go this way or that way for hours and hours and hours? Uh, it made me understand traffic pattern, patterns better. It made me understand how people p travel within the public. Um, but how invaluable that information would be to me uh, later on in my career of public service. So over the years, I have to commend PennDOT. They did an excellent job of researching this project, educating the public, which was not always easy and was not always pleasant, um, about traffic and the impacts of all of that to our community. And I have to say, I can't believe I worked with this many district engineers uh, from District 3 who were invested in this project and they kept it moving. But many of them are here today. So if you guys can just raise your hand, they're in this vicinity. We had Ken Larson. Uh, Atwood Welker, Bill Hutchinson, Paul Heiss, Jim Kender, Sandy Tosca, and Eric High. Eric and High literally almost started at the same time um, in our lives of public service. So it's really nice that we can be here today together. But I want to thank all of you <laughs> for championing this project. It wasn't easy, and there had to be times you were thinking, oh boy, we're doing all this work, I'm just not sure we're going to get there. Um, but I thank you for the time you spent solving problems for me, uh, educating me, always taking my calls. But I just have to tell you, sometimes when you were telling me no, Merle Phillips was telling me no is not an answer, get back to them. Um, so it was an interesting education for me. Well, getting funding for the thruway has always been a political battle. It was never a partisan political battle. There have been times when Democrats took the lead on this project and other times when Republicans were in the forefront. But neither group ever lost sight of the importance this project has to our region and its citizens or of their obligation to work together to bring it about. They kept pressing on. Frankly, I can't think of a more outstanding example of bipartisan cooperation than the Central Susquehanna Valley Thruway Project. And that, my friend, speaks volumes about the men and women who have represented us over the years. When the northern section is open to traffic in a few days and as work swings into high gear on the southern section, we need to remember there is still much to accomplish if we are to ensure the bright economic future for our valley that this project portends. While we should certainly count this blessing, we should also make sure that this blessing counts. We must press on to face the challenges and embrace the opportunities that the Thruway presents. There may seem be some difficult days ahead and obstacles yet to overcome, but I'm confident that if we keep pressing on together as we have in the past, we will fully realize the hopes and aspirations that those who have worked so hard to make this project a reality have cherished for so very long. Thank you.
Very good. Good work. Good work.